Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Shock report look what Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan just did to stab Trump in back. In an interview on Fox News Sunday, GOP rep. Ron DeSantis announced two Republican leadership had been blocking him and other people from investigating the Clinton Uranium One deal. According to Fox News, the House Oversight Committee has finally started looking into the Obama deal with a Russian backed uranium firm with Rep. Ron DeSantis. DeSantis then said he has spoken with a confidential informant on the matter. You can watch the video below. Clinton was Secretary of State when the Uranium One deal was made and received donations to the Clinton Foundation around the same time. I've spoken with a confidential informant that helped the FBI uncover this bribery scheme, DeSantis, Republican Florida said. Clearly, it's in the public's interest that this individual be able to tell his story to Congress. When asked by Fox News if the case would be criminal, DeSantis snapped back that it could be criminal. I have spoken with Chairman Gowdy. He believes that this is an important issue and he has indicated to me that he is supportive of what we are doing. So, I think you are going to see action, DeSantis added. It's time to start locking these people up. Share this to get this information to Trump ASAP. It seems that the GOP is in bed with the Clintons and Russians with this. Karma's ABTCH what was just leaked from the Mueller investigation has John Podesta shaking in his boots. Hillary Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta has been one of the loudest voices pushing the fake Russian collusion scandal against President Trump. Now it looks like the tables have turned and Podesta is now the target of Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. A new report shows Robert Mueller is looking into the Podesta group a group co-founded by John Podesta and headed by his brother Tony Podesta. The Podesta group lobbied for Russia's largest bank, Spurbank, and was paid a whooping $900,000 for their lobbying. Spurbank is the Kremlin, they don't do anything major without Putin's go-ahead, and they don't tell him no either, explained a retired senior U.S. intelligence official. That's not all, the busy Podesta group also represented Uranium One, a uranium company acquired by the Russian government which received approval from Hillary Clinton's State Department to mine for uranium in the U.S. and gave Russia 20% control of U.S. uranium. Visitor logs reveal that Tony Podesta visited the White House at least 114 times during the Obama administration according to White House visitor logs, and was said to have had special access to the administration through his brother, John Podesta while lobbying for various pro-Kremlin interests. If that wasn't bad enough, in March of this year it was revealed that the Podesta group forgot to register as a foreign agent for their work with Spurbank. The group violated the Foreign Agents Registration Act. Thera states Americans who lobby for foreign governments, leaders, or political parties must disclose their activities with the Justice Department and the Podesta group did not. It's clear that the only collusion with Russia has come from the Hillary campaign and her chairman John Podesta. Their corrupt actions were bound to catch up with them someday and that day is finally here. Trump just gave the signal to our nuclear bombers. Look where they are flying soon. For the first time since the Cold War, the U.S. will put its fleet of nuclear B-52 bombers on 24-hour alert. This is coming directly from the Chief of Staff John Kelly. This is in response to Putin and North Korean aggression. General David Goldfein will have the bombers ready at a day's notice for the very first time in 26 years. The bombers will be ready out of Barksdale Air Force Base and armed with nuclear weapons. North Korea has already said that Trump has war fever and called him a hooligan and lunatic. In response, North Korea said the following, dignitaries of White House, and State and Defense Departments of the U.S. are having a hard time cooling Trump overheated with a war fever, 
but only the South Korean puppet forces are fanning up the lunatic fingering a nuclear button. Lunatic Trump is running headlong into ruin, taking America with him, and the poor puppet forces are following him, at the peril of their lives. The darkness drooping low over America is sunset, not dawn, and no force can stop America from rushing headlong into downhill after overliving its era. No wonder, such hooligan as thoughtless Trump is going on the rampage after becoming owner of White House, rendering the world restless. Share this if you are glad that we have Trump to defend us from North Korea and not Hillary. Let's pray that nothing comes from this. After Gold Star Widow attacked him this morning, Trump hit back with his ultimate weapon. The widow of Sergeant Law David Johnson was one of the four Green Berets killed by ISIS in Niger this month. For the first time since her phone call with President Trump that Frederica Wilson listened in on. The president has been in a chilling fight with Congressman Frederica Wilson about the call in which Wilson said that Trump told Maishia Johnson that her husband knew what he signed up for. Wilson is a family friend of the Johnsons and was in the limo with during the call when the widow was on her way to the airport to pick up her husband's body. Trump called the master sergeant on his cell phone and pulled over to the tarmac at Dover Air Force Base to pick up Sergeant Johnson. Johnson put the president on speakerphone so everyone could hear. According to her, he knew what he signed up for, but it hurts anyway. I heard him stumbling on trying to remember my husband's name and that's what hurt me most. Because if my husband is out here fighting for our country and he risks his life for our country, why can't you remember his name? And that's what made me upset and cry more," she added. This widow is making her husband's death political and it is really sad. It is sad that her husband died and it is sad that he cannot rest in peace. His memory is now going to get drugged through the mud so that the Democratic Party can try and take down our sitting president. Share this if you feel sorry for her loss but are tired of the Democrats and people politicizing the deaths of our soldiers. God bless America. God bless Trump and God bless every single one of our troops. This Brigadier General just muzzled Frederica Wilson with these four words. I don't know if you saw it or not, but Monday morning, Good Morning America interviewed the Gold Star widow who recently lost her husband in combat, who rep. Frederica has used as a political pawn to try to discredit our president. All I can say is, when are you going to bring on the Gold Star widow who said Trump called her and that, H.E. was a great guy. He was a boss. I truly hope they give their time to both women. And, while I want the media to be fair, I doubt that will happen. They are only about ratings, and not truth. What I really hope they'll do, is what Brigadier General Anthony Tata recently said, the idea that we are continuing to use theses, sick, military killed in action combat deaths as a political weapon is appalling to me, so I think everybody needs to put down the shovel on this one. In his recent interview, he was specifically referring to Frederica, saying I think the bigger question is, why are we allowing a congresswoman to stand on the backs of four dead soldiers? Why are we continuing to dig this hole, and I thought there might be one last refuge of reverence here, and that's military deaths. That's right, he accused her of standing on the backs of the soldiers recently killed in Niger. What a compelling image, and it's exactly right. Do you agree with the Brigadier General? If you do, please share everywhere, and comment get off their backs, Frederica. H. T. The Daily Caller Sarah Sanders sends Sherrod Brown scurrying back to Ohio with tail between legs after he attacked Trump. It's all about scoring points with the hysterical left. They are so easily duped. They literally cheered on blindly as the Democrats and Obama led this nation to the brink of ruin. So duping the liberal base is not a new phenomenon. And it was always easy. But it was never this easy. They don't even have to try anymore, 
they used to have to carefully craft their lies. Now they can simply spend three minutes making up some story about Trump and blast it out on one of the anti-Trump networks and boom it ignites the liberal base into another round of their patented phony outrage. It is actually funny to watch. If it weren't so dangerous. That is why we thank God for Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She does not suffer fools. She defends the president with grace and poise and elegance and class. And a touch of humor. And sometimes, not often and only when the situation calls for it, like it did with what Sherrod Brown said about Trump, with a touch malice. Senator Sherrod Brown, who is up for re-election in 2018, said on CNN. I agree that, former White House strategist, Steve Bannon is a white supremacist, and, current staffer, Stephen Miller seems to be. And I know that studies have shown that they have their allies sprinkled around the White House. An annoyed Sarah Sanders rushed to work on her day off and her response sent Brown scurrying home to Ohio where he will have to face the voters in 2018. Good luck buddy. Senator Brown's comments are outrageous and slanderous, Sanders told the New York Post. The non-stop name-calling from the left continues to show an inability to build consensus and fix the problems ailing hard-working Americans. Senator Brown needs to understand that when he calls out public servants who are part of the Trump administration, he is indicting the voters in Ohio themselves who overwhelmingly voted for the president's agenda.